Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a great day. So I'm just continuing on with this overview coverage of all uh, the Army indexes, now getting to Grand Alliance Destruction. Uh, again, sorry this took a while to bring this one out, but as I've said sometimes before, you know, some other things come up. I just can't get to things all the time. But anyway, here we are. So, Grand Alliance Destruction. Well, um... Yeah, so I, after going through all of them, I definitely say there's some legit good stuff in here. Um, not gonna lie though, some of it is also kind of there's definitely some mixed in this art in this well, not army but Grand Alliance. Uh, there was some stuff I actually really liked, uh, some stuff that I'm not I wasn't sure of, and just some other stuff that I was like, eh, I I think they need to redo it. Um, but regardless in what in what side of the pendulum it swung, there's definitely been some change of in destruction. Um, in, a, in some ways, I would say more I would say more than uh, order did, but maybe less than chaos um, in terms of like the overall like quantity of changes. But let's get let's get to those now. Okay, so first out the gate, we got Orc War Clans, or specifically Orc War Clans Iron Jaws. Um, now. This one in particular, well, not these, not this one in particular, but just both orc armies, I think is a little strange because currently it's the only index where it's basically two armies uh, in one, but two armies that essentially have no interconnectivity with each other. Like, it, uh, I'm a little bit surprised they actually did this. Like, for one, like everybody pretty much knew that Gruel Boys and Iron Jaws were getting were getting separated, but. Uh, I, I don't under, quite understand why they didn't just give them separate, uh, like, you know, index, like, index packs. Like, for example, like, okay, like, you know, at least with things like Cities of Sigmar, yes, there are, like, humans, elves, Dwarden, but at least they, but at least there's, like, interconnectivity with them. Like, Cruel Boys and Iron Jaws, as they stand, are literally two separate armies that just happen to be in the same war pack. I really don't understand why they did this. Um knee-jerk reaction they were probably doing it because a lot of people bought the book for or war clans of four and they thought well you know what it's easier just just, just keeping them together than you know rebranding everything and separating them um that's my general opinion i i'm still in the camp however that i think uh what's going to happen is is that uh, when the actual battle tome shows up that uh, or war clans like you know iron jaws cruel boys will be brought back together when the proper battle tome arrives, and I think they will, they will eventually get another third option. That's just my personal opinion. Um, I don't think it'll be it'll be bone splitters. I think bone splitters are just gone, but we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, anyway, starting off anyway, uh, Iron Jaws. Um, well, uh, this army in and of itself has definitely seen some significant changes. Um, actually, quite a few changes. Like. Uh, going into it, uh, I, one big thing off the thi uh, off the thing you're gonna have to remember now is, uh, if however you played your army before, you can basically play it the same way again, but a lot of your mechanics are different. Like case in point, right here, smashing and bashing is gone. Well, okay, maybe not gone, but you'll, I'll get to it in a second. Um, there's been your a lot of your movement shenanigans, you know, like just you know just spending a command point and moving and other movement shenanigans like during like the shooting phase etc that's been significantly toned down now all you really get is just like a an out of secrets three inch move you know it's yeah it's definitely been toned down a bit um as for smashing and bashing it basically got turned into a lesser formation and my what i mean is by lesser formation it's one of the different formation abilities but it's not attack you you attack i kill then you attack again with another with another uh, unit, it's basically just like if you wipe out a squad, another unit gets plus one to hit. Again, significantly lessened. Having said that, um, as far as formations go, Iron Jaws are actually not bad. I I actually quite quite liked all the formations. They had they had they were fluffy. They gave some re some reasonably good buffs. Um, you know, like and uh, honestly, I, I don't think there's one that's particularly terrible. I kind of see that. There may there may be a meta forming around them, but I but you know there's definitely been worse formations. Um, yeah, and uh, on top of that too, uh, what, another good thing that that came out of this is that uh, Iron Jaws as a whole I would say actually got a lot more tougher because uh, namely there's more ways to get wards in this army. Uh, armor saves generally went up. 
Uh, you know, general lethality, especially from shooting, has gone down because that that was a big thing with Iron Jaws in the last book, like just mortal wound spam from a distance that really hurt them because they didn't really have any way to really push the, the, the ranged game except with the occasional spell. So that that's really helped them. And on top of that, too, uh, I feel like uh, with some of the changes to the rules and uh, different command abilities and different ways to, you know, play the system, I think their damage potential overall went up even if their movement or shenanigans overall went down. Excuse me. That's how I kind of see it, too. Um, so, it, it, as I mentioned before, uh, it, it, even though there's been some changes, in terms of, like, actual play style, again, nothing's really changed because you can't really change. Like, all, like everything that's been added, even, like, things like, you know, like uh, the new Wrecker squad, the new Wrecka squads, and the new, and the new Big Pigs, you know, like the, the Tusk boss and everything, even though they got in a whole bunch of new stuff, it all still works reasonably the same. Run towards the enemy and punch face until the enemy goes down. Like, uh, that's, that's the same last edition. It's going to be the same this edition. Um, we're going to have to see where the ultimate meta goes. Personally, judging by how the game is kind of developing in and of itself, I'm kind of thinking that, uh, I think maybe Iron Jaws, we might be seeing, like, the dawn of infantry Iron Jaws because the brutes are looking pretty good now. Uh, but then again, everyone good loves a good big pig. So we'll see what happens in that regard. So, now for the other half of the Dior War Clans coin. Um, well, I can start off the bat with saying that Cruel Boys have much better army traits than they did in the last, uh, the last edition. Um, much better. Um, you can really, like, quite frankly, you can really tell that they put a little more thought into giving the Cruel Boys actually something to work with here. Um, rather than what was even last edition one, I think there was one where you could boogie trap, like, a, like, uh, uh, like a piece of terrain that might go off, maybe. But, you know, you know, stuff like, just situational stuff like that that didn't really amount to much in the end. This one is much better. You know, you've got movement shenanigans. You've got ways, to, you know, to, to nix your opponent when they charge. you got all kinds of goodies here. Now, admittedly, the, you, have to, you have to be very careful about overusing them, but still, much more thought and much more care were put into this by just, just by a cursory glance. Um, but overall, though, getting down to the things like, you know, like how your army tactics are going to work and how the, the, the war scrolls look and, you know, what, the, what everything is, is working together as, it's still very similar to the last book. It's supposed to be, um, you know, a high tricksy army, got to put a lot of thought into it, got to get, you know, got to get like unit support, got to, you know, get, get your overlapping buffs. It, it, it's just, honestly, I would actually say they, they get, uh, Iron Jaws definitely changed more overall as, a, as an army than, uh, than Cruel Boys did. And by that I mean is like how your army style is going to have to change from like, for example, Iron Jaws, the loss of smashing and bashing is going to be huge for them, especially when you do mass charges. Uh, Cruel Boys, besides maybe losing some things like with mortal wound output, they really don't seem to have changed in all that much, but you have a lot more flexibility with them is what I, probably, is what I would probably describe it as. Um, this is also still going to be an army that relies heavily on mortal wound output, especially for their infantry. Um, having said that, however, they, are de they, definitely, they definitely got hit by the lack of the fact there is no mortal wound shooting anymore. So that's definitely going to hurt them. Um, but I think that the, the new dirty tricks that you can get, you get from your new army mechanic, I think that definitely makes up for it. Um, you know, at, le at least in my personal opinion, honestly, I haven't really seen them or played against them much. Uh, so it's kind of hard for me to tell just off the cusp. Uh, definitely still, you're still one of the better, the, have some, some pretty good monsters overall. Um, maybe, uh... But, you know, even still, though, even though they're, don't get me wrong, their monsters are pretty potent. You know, you got your Meyerbruth Trogoth, you got your Sludge Rakers, those always got a bit of a punch. But I still think uh, maybe they're, you know, lacking a little bit of, uh, uh, what's the word? It's not the other one, it's uh, the Anvil. There we go. Yeah, like, the thing is, like, only very few armies, I feel, can use it, can really rely on their monsters to be anvils. Usually that falls to, like, you know, un infantry squads. And I'm just not really seeing it in this army. Like, they don't... And on top of that, too, like, uh, but that, like you know, for example, even though they have more ways of moving around, you know, like, with certain spells and, uh, you know, certain manifestations of their new dirty tricks that lets them, you know, pick up and just move along the table, they're still, they're still lacking some fast-moving units because they don't really have any cavalry. 
Um, and the only, so they are, they kind of have to rely still on, you know, their ripper vultures for moving around, you know, get, like getting over on, and, and above things. Um, so I, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. Cause I do, I do feel that, uh, this game is de- it, at the end of the day, it's an objective game. You gotta be able to get to those quickly. So now gloom spike gets, um, again, like I've said before, not really a lot has changed for them. Uh, their, their, their bad moon mechanics is pretty much the same with both all the good and bad that that comes with it, you know. The good is, you know, you can, you can definitely, similar to last edition, there's, you have multiple ways in which you can manipulate, you know, the bad moon, like, you know, like, they're through, like, their loon shrine, and, you know, their manifestation, and, you know, certain characters like Scragrod. Bad thing is for it, though, is that, again, uh, all the bad things come with the moon is, again, it's random, you know, you can't always control when you need it, where you want it, uh, some of, some of the abilities are clearly better than others, like, some people are kind of saying that, you know, uh, the squig and the spider fang one just isn't as good as, like, the trogoth and the moon clan one, hard to tell, um, but, uh, again, again, it, it is what it is, and see, GW seems to be pretty adamant that that's how the moon's gonna work, so I guess everyone's just kind of have to just, you know, get used to it, I guess. Um, from what I just, I can tell just off the cusp, however, uh, the, the army as a whole, especially Moon Clan, has lost some, some, uh, survivability, especially from the very fact is that, uh, the recursion has definitely, um, like, uh, it's definitely been, been dialed back a little, like, you know, you can't spam, like, infinite rallies anymore, uh, you know, like, the fact, and the fact that your, that your Loon Shrine is a lot, is more vulnerable now than it's ever been means that, uh, you can't really rely on, like, infinitely respawning Moon Clan like you, like you did before, like, I'm not even joking, I swear, I like, I think I mentioned this last edition, and I'll say it again here, I actually think that Moon Clan was the one that finally broke the camel's back in regards to, um, uh, in regards to, like, Rally last edition, because Rally got, just got so heavily abused, like, it was supposed to be just on a six, you get a model back, but then every single army all of a sudden did it on, like, a four plus, and then the Gloom Spike gets, they could, like, they could spam it, like, three times in one turn, and they could also spam it, and they can also, like, return everything on a 4+, plus. so you had, like, you know, infinitely respawning squigs, and remember, this is when squigs were two wounds apiece, not one as they are now, so, and then, not soon after that, all of a sudden, they made it, okay, well, no, you can only do, you can only return max 10 wounds a, a, a use, you know, so, I honestly feel Gloom Spite is what finally broke that. They do still have some ways to, you know, manipulate Rally, but not nearly like you did before. Like, honestly, before even I agreed, that was ridiculous. Um, but anyway, that besides the point here, um, as for what there really is right here, again, yeah, Moon Clan, I think, lost some, lost a little bit of survivability, especially that now, especially some of their units don't have, like, you know, like, you know, like, minus one to wound tricks that they used to have. Um, their spiders are still a mixed bag for me, but that, that's, nothing's really changed in that regard. Um, I do feel that their regular spider riders need, well, one, they need a, they need a model update, Bronto, and two, they they really need to up their game a bit in terms of, like, you know, they're just, how good they are as a war scroll, because I kind of feel like they're lacking a bit in some regard. Uh, however, their big spiders, I feel, are pretty good, uh, especially, and honestly, even though I think some people aren't really giving it some due, I do feel that, that the formation that allows you to, like, to deep strike with your, sp- your big spiders and, like, bring other spiders with them, I think that actually has a lot of potential because uh, one thing that I think that makes the Arachnorons better is if you can position them where they need to be. And that's a, something that uh, I think uh, Spider Fang can do better than, honestly, any of the other sub-factions. Uh, speaking of sub-faction 2, it's also finally happened. Ale Guzzlers are gone. Um, and honestly, I expected that for a while now. Like, Ale Guzzlers, to me, they always kind of just came off as just, you know... They were just shoved in the army because, well, they didn't know, they, they, they had an orphaned, gar, uh, you know, Gargan or Giant or whatever, and they didn't know where to put it, and for some reason they didn't want to put them in, you know, like with Iron Jaws or with the Ogres. Honestly, so I honestly thought, honestly, when uh, things were breaking up, they would just put, like, the Giant, like, with the Ogre Maw Tribes, but no, I guess they put it in with the Gloom Spike Gits to give them more monsters. Maybe they thought they lacked some, some punching power. But anyway, yeah, those have been those have been moved to legends. Uh, this, uh, the only the only the only gargants left in Grand Alliance destruction are just in with the 
uh, with the uh, uh, the Sons of Bam app. So yeah, that's uh, uh, so, sorry if you're disappointed in that regard. But I, the fact that I almost never actually saw them used, and the fact that they interacted with virtually nothing in the army, kind of shows they were basically just a, as a placeholder. Uh, Squigs, on the other hand. Uh, are different uh, in a lot of ways. Well, but as a lot of people pointed out, like they all, almost all, like almost all the squig, like the the regular squigs have been reduced from uh, two wounds to one wound, and uh, there's been some change ups, especially in damage potential for a lot of their cavalry, especially like their uh, their uh, you know their their uh, boing drop bounders, etc. And some people also said that um, you know maybe their attack output has been somewhat changed. Uh, I personally think it actually went up. Uh, when, when when you start adding in some of the uh, uh, when adding in some of like the buffs you can get from like you know the squig boss and the and the loon boss on mangler squig I think those are still as good as ever. Uh, having said that, however, uh, I do feel that uh, their movement is a lot less reliable as it was before because a lot of their units are reliant on like random like dice like random movement and the, and the loss of any like any dan uh, movement buffing is really going to hurt them. So I don't I don't know how competitive they're going to be this edition, but to be fair, I don't really think they were particularly competitive last edition. So at the very least, nothing's going to change. And uh, also, as always, trolls are looking really good. Actually, they're probably looking actually very good right now because like out of all the different sub factions, I feel in some capacity they they got the you know they got nerfs. Even if they did get buffs, they still got some nerfs. Uh, Tragos, in my opinion, I kind of feel like they didn't really lose anything, really. Like, they, if anything, I think they gained more than they lost. I, I can't actually think of, like, well, you know, again, I don't really play Gloom Spite, so I can't really tell off the top of my head, but I can't really see anything with trolls that kind of, kind of jumps out at me as a nerf. It kind of, it kind of seems like they either stayed the same, or they just got, or they got, or they actually got better in some ways. Like, especially for, you know, how Trug, the Traga King, interacts with his army uh like you know how like how they i think they did a better job balancing you know their uh the different trolls against each other like so there's no one obvious pick like uh you know like you know like uh you know their dank holds i think are, are definitely better especially the, the the generic one um yeah and the fact that they might they have more easier access to like you know all the all the artifacts yeah so Personally, yeah, I'm seeing trolls coming up in the world, even though that was kind of the trend already towards the end of the edition. Um, honestly, also, too, I really feel, hope that GW does something with Snarl Fangs, because, okay, look, they made it very clear they want Snarl Fangs to be part of the army. That was, like, literally, like, their, 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 one of the new model selling point for the, up the last updated Battle Tome, but then they just did nothing with them. They got one unit of cavalry, and that's all we ever heard from them. So yeah, uh, GW. Okay, you want to you want to take get ale guzzlers out of here, fine. But you're gonna have to do something with Snarlfang. They are the Snarlfangs to me are basically the new uh, ale guzzler gargan. They're just a random unit thrown into the army, interact with nothing, doesn't re doesn't really have much of a niche, and it, and it and kind of clashes with the with the, some of the themes of the book. So yeah, you're gonna have to do something about that. Um. And now, where do I think this army is going to stand in the grand scheme of things? Um, honestly, uh, tr I'm probably trolls, like I said, are looking pretty good, but I still think hordes are where it's at. I still think, you know, bringing max of everything is probably what Gloomspite have always been good at, and, it's probably, and I don't really think that's going to change. Now, Ogre Maw Tribes, um, well, you've, I, if you've been paying attention in any capacity, you've probably seen a lot of grumbling regarding Ogre Maw Tribes, and after going through everything, um, uh, I think I, yeah, I, I don't think they're as bad as some people are making them out to be, which, to be fair, is not that hard, because some people are, were, were, like, making, like, trying to make arguments that these were, like, the worst, uh, army traits of all time, which... If you think, if you honestly think that you weren't here for earlier editions, but anyway, um, I, I do think, at, at, but at, as a whole, however, they definitely, I think they need some uh, change ups and expansion because because as they are now, yeah, they're kind of they're not the greatest in the world, and they're, and uh, and like again, I, I still think, and I, I do feel at least until they get their new battle tome, uh, ogres are going to be an army that that lives and dies at, on their war scrolls, which I'll get to in a minute. Um, now, as for, for, for formations, um, 
Their formations are okay, I guess, but, you know, not, uh, I, I will also give some credit that they are at least finally, finally trying to get to get some more, like, you know, like, cross-compatibility and rules integration with uh, the Gut Busters and the Beast Claw Raiders, but st even still, that's, it, it's still not enough. Their, their formations are okay, but I've seen better, I've seen somewhat worse, but, you know, not by much. Uh, they are what they are. Um, and, uh, uh, well, and, and like I said, now having, having said that they, that, uh, having said that GW does, is trying to integrate them a little bit more, that's not to say that they're fully integrated. These, this is still an army that it's, it's still all, at times can feel like two armies just slapped in the same book. Like, you know, there's not a lot of overlap between, you know, like, uh, heroes and, inf and, and, you know, units and monsters and infantry, uh, a lot, a lot of the artifacts kind of really work better on, like, you know, let's say gut busters or some work better on, on beast claw raiders. They don't really overlap. Um, I, th I think, uh, they're, they're I, th yeah, I, I think they, even though they're there, I, I give them credit for trying to integrate the two halves in practice. However, I'm definitely going to see, I'm definitely seeing people just like going heavily in one direction and maybe bringing like one of the other, like for example, just continuing on, just bringing, you know, mass monsters for Beast Claw Raiders and maybe including a cannon or maybe like, you know, maybe just like a, a throwaway unit of, you know, nobblers just, you know, just for, just for the heck of it. Or, you know, if you're going heavy gut busters, maybe, maybe you'll bring a Mourn Thing pack just to help with like, you know, shooting protection, but just basically just spam gut, you know, like, uh, you know, like iron guts and gut busters, you know, just again, I feel like it's just as the more things change, the more they stay the same kind of deal. And I, I will admit to you, I, I do like that they at least uh, are, put more effort into upping their overall damage ability because, uh, as you probably have known, their trampling charge ability army wide has been severely uh, restricted. Now it's not, you know, a mortal wound for, you know, inch of distance travel, it's literally just a D3. Um, yeah, that's, it's really it. There's a, you get, you, you can't really rely, and it would be, and because of that, the whole, you know, you know, uh, you know, like gaming it by increasing your charge distance, that's pretty much done. Um, now having, having said that to getting a little bit more into it, uh, Beast Claw Raiders, I, I, one thing I, that also I, I legit didn't like, um, but, but not, but not for the reason some people are having. Uh, I didn't particularly like that uh, Beast Claw Raiders definitely have lost some durability, like, objectively speaking. Um, like, especially, like, both the, both the, the be, uh, you know, like, the Stone Horns and the Thunder Tusk have lost some of their, uh, you know, their damage potential. The, the reason um, I didn't much care for this is because, well, let's be perfectly honest, I, 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 I'm actually, even though I'm not necessarily saying you have to take one or the other, I'm a big, I'm a big fan of, like, you know, I mean, having every army choice be valid to some extent. Um, and by that I mean is like, okay, yeah, if you want to go all Beast Claw Raiders, you should be able to, and it shouldn't be a completely useless army to do so. Um, but however, with, with this in mind, however, I do feel that this is definitely going to encourage people to probably go more the gut buster uh, half of the army in that regard, because as it stands right now, like, just bringing, just bringing it, like, as many units of Iron Guts and gut busters and uh, iron blasters is, I think, is going to be in the long run more competitive than doing uh, their than doing beast claw raiders. Um, now, some people might actually like that because they didn't much care for the stone horn spam of last edition. Again, maybe I, I'm not saying they're necessarily wrong. I just said from um, uh, you know from a uh, you know from a, from a principles point of view, I, I think I don't think it's a good thing. And also, I don't. And GW's attempted to rectify this somewhat with like, oh well, you know, they, they gave them this prayer, unlimited prayer, which lets them, you know, mark uh, drain pieces that can give them like, you know, potentially like a five up ward. Well, I, I, that's not the way to do it, guys. I, I I'm just gonna put it like there. Now, just having said that, I actually kind of like the I kind of like that prayer they have, you know, where they can just do that because I do like I do like it when armies can interact directly with terrain. I always feel it just kind of helps with immersion a bit, you know. It kind of gives the impression, you know, they're like using the very terrain itself to their advantage. But but stuff like that is not how you make the army more durable. Um, uh, but ha again, having said that, however, this, regardless of what you tell, you take, this is still going to be an army that's going to be heavily, 
uh, carried by the strength of its war scrolls. And this is why I think this army is not necessarily going to be as bad as some people make it out to be, because even if maybe, you know, their army traits aren't that great, and maybe some of their artifacts are maybe a little bit subpar, and their formations are a little bland, if maybe a little on the bad side, but all that out of the way, they can still, this army will still be good because their individual war scrolls still rock, you know, like maxed out squads of like gut busters are, you know, of like, you know, like, uh, you know, iron, especially iron guts are going to be super strong on the table. I've seen some games already where, you know, you, like your, your opponent just struggles to chew through just endless, endless, like wound counts of, of max squad ogres. Like you're, they're, they're hard to, they're, they're hard to remove and they've all, as they've always been hard to um, I, also on top of that too, I do feel that uh, their 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 artillery and their shooting is I think a little bit is still pretty good. Uh, hard to tell if it's better than last edition because I didn't really see much of their shooting, but I you know we'll find out in that regard too. Um, and uh, having said that, um, even though I kind I kind of said that uh, they like oh, some of their spells, you know, some of their artifacts are kind of. Again, are a little bit good, are a little bit bland. I'm not. I still think overall they still have some good magic and some good prayers overall. Like you know, they they, they have they know ways to debuff your opponent. They got ways to buff you know buff and heal their own stuff. That's still pretty good. Uh, definitely not the best uh, of either chart in the world. Um, you know, but definitely not the worst either. There, I'd say I put their I probably put their magic and their prayers at a solid uh, seven, 7.5, you know, not, 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 not bad, not terrible, you know, um, and another, oh, and, and I think this does also bear repeating, no, you cannot do the Kragno shenanigans you did from last edition, because it, it doesn't work on actual inches charged anymore, so no more 3d6 charge doing mortal wounds on fours, sorry guys, you can still bring Kragnos, yeah, like that, that, that has not changed, but uh, he, uh, he doesn't, he doesn't interact as much with this army as he does with some other armies, like, case in point right here, judging, if you, the fact that, uh, like, for example, I think he interacts more ironically with things like Gloom Spike gets than he does with Ogre Ma tribes, but still, you know, use whatever buffs you have on him, because he, he's still very, very solid, uh, in and of himself. Uh, now, Sons of Behemoth, um, I'm probably not going to talk too long about because, I, I again, I really don't have a lot of experience with them. Uh, I've definitely seen them play before, but it's kind of hard to tell, like, what the actual, like, to me is, to me, for any way, is what the actual meta is going to be because they have so few units, I don't really know how much you can really mix them up, really, besides just, you know, taking more artifacts or whatnot. Uh, but anyway, um, basically the army this edition is similar to last edition, where um, they they are probably the first one of the one of the the, the army that most takes uh, takes advantage of the rampage keyword, which makes sense because they're all monsters. Um, but basically, they have a bunch of like unique uh, battle trait rampages that any of their monsters can use, which is basically everything um, that allows them you know to get you know special things you know like you know like really pound an infantry harder, like, you know, like, body slam monsters, like, all that fun stuff, and also, they, they a lot of their units are also, and some of their units, like, Broad, for instance, are even immune to Rampage abilities, so this army, I think, is going to be a pretty hard counter to other monsters in other armies, but I do feel that armies that counter monsters are going to have a field day with these guys, but, you know, what else is new? Um, so, uh, again, the, 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 I will admit, GW seems to be very good at, get, you know, squeezing every bit of diversity out of such a, such a low model count, um, that, you know, like, okay, yeah, they don't have any wizards, but they let you, they still give you, like, uh, they still have, give you abilities that allow you to use them, because, uh, th this army, more than anything, really pushes the idea of, of artifacts, so really, really read your artifacts table and then reread them because again, you really don't have a lot of much else. Because you know, again, there's, there's no ma there's this is not an, a magic army. You gotta make you make do with what you got. Um, and, and again, uh, similar similar to last edition, this is I, I feel this is gonna be one that's this is gonna be an army still heavily relying on objective scoring. They all have very high objective scoring, you know with like, you know, that big 20, each one counts for 20 and whatnot, but uh, again, uh, this remember this is still an objective game, so, you know, be, be prepared to be camping, always be camping with these guys. Um, uh, now, do I, do you make a final snap decision on these guys, what they're going to be this edition? Um, I feel like there's, there may be, they're somewhat less durable, um, because I feel, because I feel like some armies have definitely gotten some more, uh, 
mo anti-monster shenanigans going on, um, along with maybe like also some like uh, you know like uh, some some uh, core rule changes that I think aren't going to benefit them the greatest. But I th I still think though that they have a very high uh, they might have a greater damage potential by by the sheer fact how their the war scrolls have changed up, along with you know like. Uh, some armies becoming less durable overall, which could work in their favor because, again, they haven't really lost too much durability. Um, but again, we'll have to see how the meta turns out because I, I could go either way on these guys. And lastly, and technically, Bone Splitters. Um, yeah, like the, these are still an army as of now. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't know what to say about these guys. Um, the War Scrolls, are, on a quick glance, they're fine for what they are. I mean, you know, I think I think they actually got to put some legitimate thought into into making this like still a functional army for how long, ever long it lasts. But uh, again, like I said, uh, this is this is this is an army that's on its way out the door. You know, it's already on life support as is. So uh, I, I'm not gonna go in because I, I don't think I really should be encouraging people to get into these army if they have if they're not already because again you're just setting yourself up for heartbreak. So yeah, they're here. You can still use them, but keep a mark on your calendar when that's going to change because it will. So my overall thoughts um, on this army. Uh, well, yeah, uh, no, sorry, army, but Grand Alliance. Um, overall, I think they're they're, they're doing okay. Um, definitely, if I had to put, if I had to wager a guess on what the more competitive builds are going to be, I'm think I'm kind of leaning towards Gloom Spike Gits and Iron Jaws overall. I, I, I just feel like, uh, I just feel like at least at the top of my head, they have the tricks and the, and the, or the lack, or the lack of tricks, tricks, but, but hitting power to really like, really be good on the overall tabletop. Um, Iron Jaws in and of itself, I, I do, I do notice though, they can have problems with being ground out because they're, they generally are low model counts, but I think a uh, skilled opponent can make up for that using their inherent strength as well. And Gloom Spike gets, uh, for the sheer fact is that, uh, again, they, they have what I, again, what I, what I sometimes refer to as big, big army syndrome. They have so many, they have so many war scrolls and so many different sub factions and abilities that there's, there's always tools you can use in there to chase whatever the current meta is. So they, they, what they lack in, let's say direct hitting power, I feel they, they make up for in, uh, like flexibility. And I do feel that that's going to be a big thing um this edition because i because again because as gw has made it clear they're they're, they're going to be more than willing to make changes as it goes so you an army that can think on its feet very well well that's something that's not something to discount um overall i think they're the the grand alliance is fine um i don't think any army is unplayable uh well except for bone splitters but that's for that's for meta reasons um and i i think i think it was i think that the changes were fair I think everything ultimately lost something, but I think they also gained some things as well. Um, well, some people might, might fight me on Ogre Ma tribes, but, you know, again, I don't think their Ogre Ma tribes are as bad as people say they are, but again, I don't think they're good for the reasons that GW want us to think. Like, and, heck, in, for instance, their battle traits, uh, sorry, their army traits, uh, no, they're not good because of that. They're good because their war scrolls are just plain good. Um, but anyways... Um, yeah, I got, I got pretty much nothing really else to say in that, re in, in this regard. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how things develop with them and as we wait for the battle tomes to arrive. And, uh, anyway, I hope you, I hope you stuck around to the end and you enjoyed what I had to say. Um, anyway, have a good day. Cheers.